You remember Scott Bale, right? Remember when he was on the top of the world and in charge. Are you talking to me? So what the heck is he up to today? And why did Scott Bayo disappear? Welcome to Do You Remember? I am Nostalgic Nick. Scott Bayo came from humble beginnings to become a teen heartthrob in the late 1970s. Women in bathing suits and a whole lot of Scott Bayo. Bayo Watch. Watch. But today, he's better known for his conservative activism and starting online feuds with other celebrities. He was also back in the news in 2018 when two former Charles in Charge co-stars made shocking allegations of sexual misconduct behind the scenes. Like oh so many other child stars, Scott Bayo has struggled to top his early success now that he's all grown up. So get comfortable because we're gonna tell you about the tragic fall of Scott Bayo. Before we crank it up, be sure to hit that thumbs up icon if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel so we can notify you about future content. When was Scott Bayo popular? Scott Vincent Bayo is the son of Italian immigrants and grew up in Brooklyn's Bay Ridge neighborhood. Bayo would bug his mom to take him to auditions, and he appeared in his first TV commercial when he was just nine. A new post honeycomb cereal is part of your balanced breakfast. Scott told one interviewer, quote, I wasn't a desirable looking kid. I was very Italian looking, and at the time, they were looking for Irish kids. Campbell's Soup Kids. But his Italian appearance was exactly what they were looking for in the 1976 musical Bugsy Malone. Mbeo beat out over 2,000 little actors to land the title role. Paramount only gave the film a limited US release, but it was highly successful overseas, and Bayo's stock shot way up. Later that same year, he became a household name as Fonzie's cousin Chachi on Happy Days. How you doing, Blue Eyes? What are you selling today, shrimp? Did Chachi really love Joni? During his time on Happy Days, Bayo received over 5,000 fan letters a week, two daytime Emmy nominations, and his own spinoff in 1982. Joni Loves Chachi co-starred Aaron Moran, and the two actors also had a four-year-long relationship behind the scenes. The spinoff actually tied Three's Company for fourth in the Nielsen ratings during its first season, but dropped to 70th place that following year. So ABC pulled the plug, and the actors returned to their regular duties on Happy Days. Unfortunately, Aaron Moran struggled with depression and had difficulty finding more work after the series ended. She also had severe financial difficulties and was forced to move in with her mother-in-law in Indiana after her home was foreclosed in 2010. When she passed in 2017, at the age of 56, the Daily Mail reported her death as, quote, a suspected heroin over based on an anonymous tip. During a radio interview on The Bernie and Sid Show two days later, Bayo said he was shocked and saddened to learn of Moran's death, and then proceeded to say he wasn't surprised. Bayo said, quote, for me, you do drugs or drink, you're gonna die. The backlash against his seemingly unsympathetic remarks was immediate. Mbeo released a statement on Facebook clarifying his comments after an autopsy revealed that Moran died from throat cancer with no drugs or alcohol in her system. Mbeo said, quote, I was asked only about Aaron's troubled past due to drug and alcohol abuse. Now it seems every news outlet and tabloid wants to paint a different picture of me and of what really happened. They're stating that I'm saying drugs caused her to die after it was reported stage 4 cancer. This is so wrong. Now I truly understand the meaning of fake news. This is crazy. The Elephant in the Room Scott Baio is a card-carrying Republican who campaigned for President Ronald Reagan in his youth. When the Gipper passed in 2004, Baio attended his state funeral and told the New York Daily News, quote, President Reagan made me feel proud to be an American. Today, I feel sadness. Bayo also endorsed Mitt Romney in 2012 and spoke on opening night of the 2016 Republican National Convention in support of Trump. We'd like to remind all Do You Remember viewers, we never endorse political candidates and choose instead to satirize them all equally for your amusement. With that being said, we all know that tempers flare whenever politics are discussed, even at an elementary school function. 
On December 15, 2016, Bayo filed a police report accusing Nancy Mack, the wife of Red Hot Chili Pepper Chad Smith, of physically assaulting him while they were picking up their children. Bayo claimed Mack began berating and cursing him over his support of former President Trump, and then began to shake and push him. Mack claimed she was trying to show Bayo how the former president hugs women and denied any intentional physical aggression. It should surprise no one that yes, their feud continued on Twitter, but no criminal charges or lawsuits were filed. Scott Bayo continues to be an unapologetic Trump supporter and says he's not afraid of the consequences. Bayo told The Hollywood Reporter, quote, I genuinely in my heart do not care if I ever work again. I don't care. I'm comfortable and I've got a great life. But if I don't have a country that is recognizable to me, I've got nothing. Is Scott Bayo racist? It would be virtually impossible to pick Scott Bayo's most controversial take. But the actor received death threats in 2010 after making a joke at then First Lady Michelle Obama's expense. The tweet was deleted soon after the initial backlash, but reportedly included a less than flattering photo of the president and first lady with the caption, quote, Wow, he wakes up to this every morning. Bayo's Twitter timeline was soon flooded with responses calling Scott racist. Bayo insisted that he had no prejudices and attempted to prove his point by posting a picture of an African-American woman with the caption, quote, Do I look like I'm racist? This is Renee's best friend. Stop using the race card. MSNBC anchor Tamron Hall brought up the controversial tweet again in 2016 during the aftermath of that infamous Hillary Clinton tweet. And Bayo's response was, quote, That tweet was a joke. I'm a guy from Brooklyn. I have a certain sense of humor. I sit with my buddies and we smoke cigars and we make jokes. More allegations surface. After Happy Days ended its 11 season run on ABC in 1984, Bayo played the title role on the CBS sitcom Charles in Charge. The series featured Bayo as a college student hired to supervise three children and was placed on hiatus during its first season due to lackluster ratings. The show was subsequently retooled and moved to first run syndication where it ran successfully from 1987 to 1990. But in 2018, a couple of Bayo's former co-stars made some absolutely shocking allegations. During a podcast interview, Nicole Eggert, who played Jamie Powell on the show, claimed that she lost her virginity to Bayo while she was still a minor. Eggert also claimed that everyone she knew thought they were dating at the time, and she was horrified and humiliated. She called Bayo disgusting. She reportedly said that he said, you can't tell anybody, this is illegal, I'll go to jail, the show will be over, you'll ruin everyone's life. So what has Scott said? He says that's not true, but that he and Eggert engaged in a one-time consensual sexual encounter when Eggert was 18. Alexander Polinsky, who played Adam Powell, also called a press conference and claimed that he encountered a sexual-themed hazing. Polinsky said, quote, Scott pulled down my pants in front of a hundred people. Another time he laughed as he cut a hole in the canvas wall of my private dressing room on set and exposed his genitals to me. Both Eggert and Polinsky asked for a public apology, but the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office declined to bring charges against Bayo, citing an expired statute of limitations. What does Scott Bayo do now? The Bayo family recently relocated from California to, guess where, Florida. And the actor stays busy supporting conservative candidates and starting new online feuds. In 2020, Bayo targeted comedian Wanda Sykes after then-presidential candidate Joe Biden made a controversial remark on The Breakfast Club radio show. During the broadcast, Biden quipped, Do you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump? And you ain't black. Bayo quickly responded by tweeting, Hey, Wanda Sykes, why is it okay for Joe Biden to say something clearly racist? But the real Roseanne gets kicked off of her show that you are a writer on for making a mistake? Is it because you're a full of shite hack liberal? Sykes responded to Bayo just like any other heckler, saying, Oh, hey, Chachi, apologize I didn't see you. I'll keep it short. Joe Biden didn't say, Then you ain't an ape. Well, let me get back to work. I hope you enjoy whatever it is that you do. That's been our look at the tragic fall of Scott Baio. And now it's time to hear from you. 
Do you think Bayo's political views actually cost him his work? Or is it simply a lack of talent, a child star struggling to grow old? Finally, what are your thoughts about the allegations behind the scenes of Charles in Charge? Please get in the comments and let us know. If you enjoyed our deep dive, please hit that thumbs up icon, it really helps. Subscribe to our channel so we can notify you about our next video. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you very much for watching.